Hey everyone, Becky here. Um, so I'm coming to you today um, for something totally different from what I normally do. Um, I am normally talking about nutrition and fitness or I'm baking something for you. Um, but today I am of a very heavy heart and I'm struggling a lot. Something happened this week that has totally flipped my world upside down once again um, and again and again. But um, so I just I kind of I kind of want to backtrack first um, and then get into it. But I wanted to come to you today because I made a promise to myself at the beginning of the year that I would stop holding things in, stop holding them back, and being honest and open um, about what I'm going through and what I'm struggling with and what, you know, because I can't, I can't do this alone. None of us can do this life alone. And I have tried for year, my entire life living that way, and I, I can't anymore. And... <laughs> So, starting with my story, um, I have a very strong faith, and I have learned through the things that I have gone through that you can't do it alone. And you really need a whole army of people to get through some of this stuff because prayers can do miracles. And prayer is something that I learned a long time ago um, when I was first pregnant with my first daughter um, and she would be born with a congenital heart defect and I struggled with that. I was angry with God and I found prayer in the hospital every day with her. I started praying every day. I started opening my Bible. I started singing praises and it made me a different person. It made me a more positive person, positive on everything in life. Um, even when something in front of you is just the hardest thing in the world. So with all this, I, I am going to ask um, all of you prayer warriors out there um, to start saying some prayers for me. Um, because I've seen prayer doing do amazing things, and um, and so I'll just I'll get into it. Um, a little over three years ago, I was pregnant with Gracie, my first daughter. During that pregnancy, I I noticed something. I didn't know it was there before, or maybe I just didn't pay attention to it. But I started getting this itch on my back. Um, all the time and there was a bump there and so I would look in the mirror and I just I'd see this mole um, and and it alarmed me of course because I never I never even knew that that big mole was there I mean it was the size of maybe my pinky nail um, and, and it looked funny to me, and I, I called my mom, and I said, Mom, I just noticed this. What do you, do you think it's something? And she said, well, I would call a doctor and, and see what they say. And I called uh, a couple doctors, and they said, you know, it's normal for your moles to change during pregnancy. And I told them, well, okay. <laughs> just kind of shrugged it off. You know, just kind of moved on, and um, uh, about two weeks ago, I went into the dermatologist because I was having issues with uh, psoriasis, eczema um, type stuff. <laughs> it was a really rough and dry winter, so um, it was just kind of, it was at a point where I was like, oh, I need to see a doctor for this, so I went to a dermatologist, and um, and you know, these dermatologists, they look your entire body over 
Um, so, you know, he looked me over and he asked about a few of my moles, you know, underneath my, um, the back side of my, you know, calves and, and I said, no, I haven't, <laughs> you know, really been paying, paying attention to those and, and he's like, okay, well, you, you look pretty good, but, you know, pay attention to those. And then I pointed out the mole on my back underneath my bra strap that, um, had been bothering me for since I was pregnant three years ago and so he looked at it and he was he was concerned so he took biopsy of it and um, it, you know just as a cautionary type thing and um, it was on Tuesday this week that I finally got a phone call back from my doctor and he said um, that five specialists had looked at the biopsy and all of them said the same thing, that, um, that this looked cancerous and, um, and that they want to remove um, the growth and so he connected me with a <clears throat> another doctor that would do the surgery. So my husband and I went to the doctor um, on Wednesday very early in the morning and um, sat down with him and, and he looked at it and he said, okay, here's the plan. Um, and he explained to us that uh, this biopsy um, was showing signs of melanoma. He explained to us um, in his <laughs> his uh, doctor language that um, basically this looked like melanoma, um, which is a, a skin cancer, and we had to remove it. Um, they would make a big incision um, from the middle of my back to um, underneath my right armpit. Um, is there another word for armpit? It's such an unpleasant description. So it would be pretty, pretty large. Um, and uh, of course they would stitch it up afterward, but um, what they want to do is remove as much of it as they can, um, a skin surrounding it because of the chances of it spreading. Um, they just, they just want to take out, um, you know, another precautionary type thing. Surgery is scheduled for this Tuesday morning, um, May 5th, and um, I am scared as heck. <laughs> I'm really shaken by this. I, with all of the things that have happened in the last three years, losing my daughter and struggling with my grief and just wanting to give up over and over again and and depression and eating disorders and my husband being let off from from a job that was paying the bills <laughs> and having to sell our house now because we can't afford it and Right now, I am looking out the window at a beautiful, bright red cardinal. <laughs> you see that? I have been asking <laughs> for days for God to speak to me, to show me something. And that right there, that was, that was beautiful. 
can you guys totally experience that with me? I am really hopeful um, this, that this will all, you know, this will be something that's just a little bump, you know, a little, a little hill. As I was thinking about this the past few days, I just, I keep on saying, you know, <clears throat> over and over again, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I just keep getting hit by these things, and it's so hard. But I'm going through it, and and I'm gonna fight this. Nothing can ever bring me down more than losing my daughter. That was the ultimate sacrifice, was letting my daughter go. It wasn't my choice. It was only God's choice. It was only His will. And as much as I'm struggling with this and not wanting to do this right now, this is His will. This is just another, just another part of my journey, just another thing that God is putting on me and having me go through because I might not know it right now, but there is a reason for everything that happens. Losing Gracie was even though I don't understand it completely, um, and I probably never will, um, but part of it was for me to change as a person, for me to be someone that is a servant to God and is a servant to those in need. And that is my purpose, that is my mission here. and. If this right here, if this making this video telling you about my struggle and telling you that God will help you through this, because um, he is here for me. He, that red, beautiful red cardinal outside my window, that was him. That was Gracie, you know, telling me, it's okay. I'm right here, I'm here for you, and it's gonna be okay. So if that, if that is my mission, then I, I will, I will take this on. I will, I will be strong and I will get the, through this and I will fight. Um, I will fight because I have a family, I have a daughter, and I want more kids, and I will fight this, I will get through this, and, and I, I'm asking you now, um, this, is, this is so not like me to be open and honest like this, it's just, it's totally out of my comfort zone. Like I said, I'm really, I'm really shaken by this, um, I don't can't comprehend it all right now, I can't put it all together, but um, I'm going to persevere and I'm going to trug on and march on and people tell me all the time, Becky, you are so strong and I never believed it before, but I am because I have to be. And one other thing that I actually found out in um, doing tons of research the past few days, it's, it's just me, it's just what I do. I, I find out something and I do everything I can to um, educate myself. 
So what I found out is that May, the month of May, is Melanoma Awareness Month. And um, it's Awareness Month, so I guess... <laughs> I think I think it's um a little fitting, don't you think? Um weird. <laughs> weird really. But um it is melanoma awareness month and um and I guess I'm I am sharing my story for the first time. I, I didn't know I would have this story to tell you. Um but uh here I am and <laughs> This is how it goes in life sometimes, right? So all your prayer warriors out there, um, I ask that you um, say a prayer for me on Tuesday, Tuesday morning, 7.30 a.m. <laughs> um, I'd, I'd so appreciate that and, and um, like I said, prayers can move mountains. They really can. And um, I'm going to remove this mountain on my back and <laughs> making jokes at a time like this. Yay! <laughs> you don't have to laugh. You have to laugh through life to stay positive and 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 to create energy and um, just gotta gotta love this life. Because we're only here for a short time and um it might not seem like it now, you know, because I'm only 28 years old. But if you wouldn't mind saying a prayer um, for me on Tuesday, that all goes well and um, that in the coming days um, we will get positive results, good results, um, that I don't have to have any further treatment uh, at this time and um, pray for my health and healing and um, if you feel compelled, <laughs> um, share it with, uh, your friends. I don't mind. Um, bigger the army, <laughs> the better, right? Um, and I think that's it for me. Um, have a fantastic week, you guys. Um, talk to you later. Bye.